everybody, welcome to the next installment of QWR Nature News. Um, my name is Kim. And I'm Renee. And, um, and today we are going to talk to you about some avian raptors. Um, and we have a very special guest for you today. And I have a joke that's a hint for um, the friend that you're going to meet. How do hawks talk to their friends? I don't know. Hockey talkies. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually have an educator joining us that is one of the educators you might recognize here at Bob Wildlife Refuge. So today, um, Mr. Tony will be teaching you about hawks. <laughs> Yay! I like the drum roll. Everybody say hi drum to Mr. Roll. Tony. Hi everybody, <laughs> good to see everyone. How's all of our friends at home from our Quag Wildlife family, we have something very special to, for you today. The first question I have for you is this. Who here loves birds of prey? This is very important because here at the refuge we take care of a lot of rescued birds of prey. You might have met Hooter the last time or seen some of the owls that we had. But this time we have a special daytime hunter that you're going to get to see and learn all about. And I hope someone remembers, who, what is a daytime hunter called at home? Let's see. We have nighttime is nocturnal, diurnal. Can everyone say diurnal at home? We are all diurnal if we're daytime active, but today you're gonna to get a chance to see some of the avian raptors that are in this family, specifically red-tailed hawks. Who here loves red-tailed hawks? All right, good. Uh, these birds of prey are some of my favorite because when I'm out there in nature, I get to look up high in the sky and I see a beautiful type of bird circling with its wings out and soaring most peacefully way up in the sky and a lot of times I see a little bit of red and that's our red-tailed hawk soaring, soaring way out there. So who'd like to meet a red-tailed hawk today? Up close and personal. I do. All right, cool. So they're in the family of Buteo, and these are broad-winged raptors. They fly with very large wings, fanned out tails. They're absolutely gorgeous creatures. And these animals are very common. We get to see them all across Long Island. and all across North America. So we have our beautiful male red-tailed hawk here. Um, he is an absolutely gorgeous bird. He came to us from uh, the rescue center, the North Fork Rescue Center. Um, he basically is a bird that was, is here because of a, a wing injury that most people don't realize. All of our animals have these injuries, uh, different types of injuries, but his is a left broken wing. And he came to us in 2008 with this wing. You can see it's just held down just a little further than the other. So he was injured by a car, he was in a car accident. He wasn't driving though, right? So people as they're driving don't usually see these beautiful birds swooping down low for their food. So our guy here was soaring and probably clipped into a car and has that wing injury. Can he fly on his own or hunt on his own anymore? Not at all. So he's with us at the refuge as a permanent resident and he's an absolutely beautiful bird to work with. Can anyone see what color eyes our red-tailed hawk has here, if they look up close. What color eyes do you see? There we go. Take a look at his plumage too while he's up here. Beautiful brown, he's got these beautiful brown eyes, brown plumage, and these yellow legs, right? And if you notice, I'm wearing a special glove called the gauntlet today. It's made of many layers of leather. I have what's called a leash here, and on his legs are called jesses. Now when he was found, he was actually found with one of these jesses on his leg already. So that's kind of interesting, it's a detective clue. When we look at that, that tells us he belonged to a special hunting person that called a falconer. A person that uses or works with a red-tailed hawk or other bird, uh, like a falcon, to hunt rabbits and squirrels and things like that. But he was found with one of those on, which means he belonged to one of these people right here on Long Island, and he had gotten away, and now with us here at the refuge after that accident. Um, when we look at a bird of prey like this, one thing I want you to really notice is why he's called a red-tailed hawk. If you can see that really cool rusty or rustic color right there, very good. And that beautiful color on his tail doesn't just happen right away. They're actually, they morph. So around two years old, they'll actually change colors. Their eyes will go from yellow to this brown color and their tail will morph to be a mature red phase versus that striped or striated tail that they have usually when they're immature uh, red-tailed hawks. Now, when we look at his feet, this is really important. 
His feet have something really cool. All right, we're gonna do one more close up. Who can see what's on his feet? And if you remember, Renee was teaching about uh, Hooter, what those were called, and those are his, very good, talons. So his talons are these super sharp hooked nails. He's got four of them in total, three pointing in the front, one pointing in the back, and his feet almost look like dinosaur legs. So if you look very closely at your Velociraptors or T-Rexes, you'll notice his feet look very similar to that with scaly, scaly toes. Super powerful, hundreds of pounds of pressure in there. All right, now one thing I didn't mention about his eyes, this is really important. When you look at a bird of prey that flies in the daytime, a diurnal hunter such as a hawk, an eagle, a falcon, uh, a kestrel, they have these weird things above their eyes that look like they're angry. Who can make an angry face at home? There we go. And you do that by using your eyebrows, but for them, they have to use they have a built-in eyebrow ridge. It's a part of their skull that hangs over their eye, and he makes it, makes it look very intense. He's got a very intense look. But that actually helps him with flying in the daytime and not getting blinded by the sun. So if you own a hat or a pair of sunglasses, you're basically protecting your eyes the same way they would. Very cool. All right, now, our red-tailed hawk is actually not as big as the other ones can be. They, they vary in size, about 18 to 26 inches tall, but for wingspans, we're talking about three to five feet. So for the males, womp womp, they're the smaller ones. The females have a larger wingspan, a larger size, they're the egg carriers, and the ones fighting off a lot of predators around the nest. So he's pretty small actually, compared to a female red-tailed hawk. Now, these wings, can take them at, at about 120 miles per hour at diving speed. That's pretty quick. But usually when they're soaring, they can go about 20 to 40 miles per hour, just nicely gliding. Now, if you've ever seen a red-tailed hawk soaring, they look like a kite. So they're also in the members of kite families where they can soar on wind currents from the, from the earth, there's warm air rising, and they can soar for hours a day on these thermal air currents that are coming from the earth. Now, we kind of emulate that or try to copy it when people go, uh, hang gliding and other things. We learned that from hawks like this. So when they're, when they're flying up high, guess what they're doing? They're actually using their eyesight, some of the best eyesight in the world, to see their food from way up in the sky. So if you are a red-tailed hawk, are you ready for this? You could read your book, or look at the pictures, depending on how old you are, from across a football field. So that's amazing. This is some of the best acute vision out there in the world. So he can see the tiniest thing way up in the sky. Whoop! That's 10 <laughs> points. All right, birds also have to poop every 10 to 15 minutes usually since they don't have a bladder and that makes them lighter. That's an important part to talk about here. Uh, let's see, he did aim right in the right spot though. Uh, that brings us to the next thing, his food. What does he eat? Chicken nuggets? No. Hot dogs? No. We're talking about the, a range of foods from the smallest rodents, mice, voles, moles, he loves squirrels, rabbits they love. Uh, they'll also eat other birds. So you're looking at, uh oh, cannibals too. So he's one of the best predators out there eating all kinds of things. I've even heard sometimes cats and small dogs. One time, my chickens. So you're looking at what they also call the chicken hawk. All right, you, won't, you don't wanna eat my hawk, my chickens at home. So with red-tailed hawks, when they're soaring, they're coming around, they spot their food, they glide silently from the behind. They use those talons to grip or seize their, uh, their prey, and that's why they get the name raptor, right? Raptors are animals that seize, so that's why he's a raptor. Usually he'll do a quick nip, and his, his beautiful hooked beak is like a special fork and knife set built in. He can hook and uh, scrape and eat every little morsel from his food. All right. Red, you doing good there? How many of you are across America? That's what a lot of people usually ask. Well, they said there's about two million nesting red-tailed hawks across America. This is a bird that can be found all across uh, different habitats, from deserts to marshes, uh, forests, woodlands. They're very highly adaptable to all these different places as they hunt all these different types of foods. Um, and they're seen in all different types of moors and sizes. All right. His feathers, I'd like to show you one of his feathers up close. Let's see, maybe, maybe we can have Renee come right up. We have some feathers on the table that are very cool to see. Now, primarily, yeah. there are feathers that 
help them fly, so they're wing feathers, right? Try and social distance. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and be in the same frame. <laughs> so we have a tail feather and a flight feather. Both very different. Come on up, show them right up close. Up that beautiful way. rusty color, you can see really close, that rustic color for the right. tail. This is the tail feather. Yeah. And this right here is their flight feather. Good in the frame, yeah, yeah, you're good. <laughs> Perfect. And notice the striations on the, the flight feather. All these special colors of browns and, and whites help them to blend in, into their surroundings. And what is that word to blend into your surroundings at home? Very good. Camouflage. So camouflage is what they work with. Take a look at that back end of him. He blends right into the woods, right in there with the tree. And then his white chest, he would blend right in there with the sky. So he has some really awesome camouflage. Um, if you've ever heard of red-tailed hawk, they've got an amazing call, right? No, just kidding. Uh, their call is actually the sound that most movie makers use for movie bits. They don't even, even if it's an eagle, usually they're like, oh, we'll put a red-tailed hawk sound. It has a very sharp, curry kind of a call or screech. And that call basically is the one that you'll hear way up in the sky and will be copied by blue jays and other creatures to scare away the birds from the bird feeders. So that's really cool to hear. Kind of like a pterodactyl if we ever heard one. Whoop, there we go. Good job. I think you got scared from that sound. It's like, uh-oh, who's talking to me now? So one last thing we're going to talk about is, are his eggs. Excuse me, the female's eggs, right? Spring is in the air. April is the time that they actually nest. So this is the time that red-tailed hawks will begin to lay their eggs. The first week of April, and they usually lay about two to five eggs, which is really cool. They nest really high up in the trees with a large stick branch, uh, sticky branchy nest that they take over together. They work together as a team, which is very good. And their eggs are actually the size of about a chicken's egg with spots. Maybe we can take a look and show them that too. Those eggs, I would have thought would be much larger for a bird of prey like this, but just about the same size with little spots of almost like a reddish brown. Wow. See that? Now that one's a little dull, but when it first came out, it had a really beautiful reddish rustic color on that, and that those spots would help with the camouflage. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. All right, cool. All right. I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna say goodbye to Pale Mail right now while I put them inside. We're gonna take a little walk around and discuss some other birds of prey that we have around our refuge site. One second, everyone say goodbye to, goodbye to our red tailed hawk friend. There we go. Yeah. So if anybody has any questions that they want to ask before, uh, while Tony puts the red-tailed hawk away. Um, oh, we have one um, that was from a few minutes ago from Caitlin. And she's asking if red-tailed hawks are related to turkey vultures. Oh, so both red-tailed hawks and turkey vultures are considered birds of prey, but they are in different groups. So red-tailed hawks are, it, in the hawk family, turkey vultures are in the vulture family. So they are different, different groups, Very but they cool. are kind of similar. Very cool. I don't see any questions coming up right now. Um, so we can, uh, if you want to move on for now, Tony. Sounds good. All right, so if there's no other questions, one cool thing to talk about while pale male, while our red-tailed hawk is resting is this bird of prey right here. This is pale male. It's a little hard to see. This is one of the first red-tailed hawks that actually moved to New York City in 1991. He was the first one to move into Manhattan. He lived in, on Fifth Avenue. There's a cool video to, to watch, by the way. And he started the whole thing in New York with red-tailed hawks coming back to Long Island. And that's a very important thing to talk about because a lot of birds of prey were almost wiped out by different things that humans interact with, which is uh, automobile accidents, uh, they, some, a lot of them have been shot at by farmers and other people, DDT spraying. Um, so they were on the rise starting in the 1990s and they actually, the first guy took nesting right on Woody Allen's balcony. He tried to fight that nest from staying there and everyone got together to make a difference for Pale Mail where he could actually stay there and have a, a total of three families on that one balcony. Wow. So humans can make a difference for animals and that's something we want to discuss too. Was it cool meeting our red-tailed hawk today? I hope so. But maybe there's something that you can come home with, which is conservation. How can we help them? How can we preserve their woodlands that they live in? 
How can we not poison the food that they eat, such as those rodents? Maybe use have a heart traps instead. Um, and think about our children's children's children seeing these birds later on in life. And that's our job today. And if we don't learn about them, we'll never do that job. That brings me to this important bird, which is the osprey. Another diurnal hunter. This is the one that is known on Long Island to come around and nest on every single platform nest that I've seen put up. They're all over the place, 90% fish in their diet. The osprey is also known as the fish hawk. And maybe we'll take a look at one of our se uh, sections or exhibits of the osprey just to show you a little closer what they look like and connect to that lesson of diurnal hunters. Right over here, flying above the rafters, or just at the rafters, you'll see the osprey nest so right up here. Here's the two go. of them. And this is the one that is our daytime fish hunting uh, bird of prey that you'll see flying around some beautiful uh, fish usually pointing aerodynamically. Yeah, there's, that's the one thing that's wrong with this osprey is whenever they carry a fish, it's incredible. They actually line it up in line with their body so it doesn't get any wind resistance. Um, so they don't carry it like that. <laughs> they look really close to the red-tailed hawk. They look like close cousins, um, but they're not going to eat the same things or have habitats in the same places as the red-tailed. So we're so happy to see this bird of prey back on Long Island, and it's because of a small group of people. A guy named Dennis Puliston decided that, you know what, not only is he going to study and love nature, he's going to go out and find out what's causing their demise. And he found out that that DDT level in the eggshells was off the charts and he said, I have to do something about it. And he did. He said that he would try to do his best to bring that population back. He sued the DDT company, he won. And because of efforts like that, we get to see ospreys, red-tailed hawks, and our other awesome national bird. Who can guess our national bird? Please tell me you know it the American Bald Eagle coming back to Long Island. So right up here, you get a chance to see our other diurnal bird of prey out there hunting. These three are like family members. Six to eight foot wingspan for this Incredible. guy. Incredible. And this is an immature one with uh, mottled brown and white all over. But this is one we get to say for over 80 years has not been nesting and finally is now confirmed nesting across Long Island. Mm -hmm. So over eight to nine nesting sites, we're amazed to look at our own windows here at the refuge and see eagles sitting on the trees and sitting around our habitat. Right in my own backyard, I have eagles too now. So this is a beautiful thing. It's a great time to be alive during this time. I call it a nature renaissance, but we have to keep these efforts going. So. Very true. So now I guess we'll come back over here and say, yeah. if you guys have any questions at all about um, raptors, red-tailed hawks, bald eagles, Osprey, you name it. Um, oh, yeah? So, do you know what their average lifespan is? Ah, so mm -hmm. the average lifespan span for a red-tailed hawk is about 20 years in captivity. They have seen them live up to about 30 years, which is pretty cool. Um, our red-tailed hawk is at least close to 15 or more since we had him for so long. Um, so that's a pretty long life, 20 to 30 years. That's an excellent lifespan. Good question. Samantha Volpe wants to know if they mate for life. Ah, so with red-tailed hawks, a lot of birds of prey do mate for life. They say these ones usually do. They work together as a team, um, but that's something to be Googled a little closer to see if a lot of these species mate for life. Ospreys will come back and return every year. Might be a little different for them. Yeah? Jessica Valderrama wants to know, do ospreys mate for life? Yes, so ospreys are known to travel and migrate all the way to places far South America. And when they come back, they literally look. Usually the male comes back first, builds the nest a little bit, and then the female comes back and they do mate for life. That, that is known. So do bald eagles. Yeah? Do bald eagles steal food from ospreys? Ricky Le Lechner. This is an awesome question because I just looked up. I was home yesterday and I looked up in the sky, and what do I see? An immature bald eagle going after an osprey to steal his fish. The two of them aerial battling, so yes, they will try to take their food from other creatures and they save their energy by doing so. Yeah, good question. There's another question from Samantha and she wants to know if ospreys return to the same nest each year. Yes, so if that nest hasn't been taken over by another bird of prey or other ospreys or a great horned owl, which has happened here at the refuge, uh, here. They try to find that same nesting spot, so the one way we can help them 
is try to initiate getting more nesting sites put out there because every pole I've seen has been taken over and their their populations are doing great now. Same thing with the red-tailed hawks and eagles. Oh, we got a lot of questions. Yeah. yeah. Um, do the bald eagles stay year-round or do they migrate? Question uh, from Desiree. That's a great question. So a lot of bald eagles do migrate to colder places and come back, but some of them have taken full residence and decided to stay and have their nests here. So this is something actually new that we're seeing, which, which is they're coming, they're checking out the residence, the, the, the rentals and everything else, and they're actually staying, a lot of them, to have their nests. Yeah. And I think we'll ask one more. Will wants to know, how do you tell a turkey vulture from a red-tailed hawk? Ooh, great question, Will. Okay, so if you look at the wingspan of a red-tailed hawk, it's straight out like this. Same thing with bald eagles, straight soaring like a kite. If you look at that turkey vulture, whoosh, turn into a V-shape and waddle around as if you haven't taken too many good flying lessons. And then also look at their head. Turkey vultures have a reddish colored head with no feathers on the head part, but red-tailed hawks are covered from head to tail. All right. Very cool. Okay. So one thing you could do at home, would you like to? No, you can Come on. Just tell oh, I just wanted to say, if you follow the refuge online, um, you can follow us. I see many of you are on Facebook, but you can also look into becoming a member of the refuge um, and supporting us and the animals that live here. But Kim, behind the camera, will Hi, send out lots of information <laughs> on uh, some of the topics that we learn. So she'll send you different information through that. She'll send you some cool activities to do about the topics and also some cool crafts. So I'll let you talk about this craft. So. <laughs> uh, Sorry, this, uh, this one's flying into it right at you here. Woo! This is a really simple craft you could do at home to help birds in general. Uh, it's just a basic piece of construction paper. You can use any kind of paper that you want. Uh, and cut out a simple bird silhouette. Now what the cool thing is when you're making this, take your piece of rectangular paper, fold it in half, and draw your bird on one side only so you use a special word in math terms called symmetry. It'll be the same on both sides when you cut it out so when it's open, you've got this perfect bird silhouette. I like to use birds of prey. Tape this in your window and then this can help birds uh, navigate and not hit your windows because they think another bird is in the way. So many birds actually die uh, by the thousands by hitting windows in New York City, across America, hitting our own windows at home. This is one way we can help. It's a simple craft. Get as craftastic as you want on this when you're at home. Yeah. Decorate it, color it up, and then just simply tape them in your windows from the inside, and hopefully they help birds from hitting your windows, and we see more beautiful creatures during the spring. Right. Very cool. Thank you. And um, one more thing, guys, we also have a bird of prey word search that we're going to be posting on Facebook along with this craft. And um, we will be back on Thursday with a, another special segment for you guys, um, this time in honor of spring and all its happenings. Um, so check it out at 1 p.m. on Facebook here on Thursday. And then say goodbye to Mr. Tony. Bye, everyone. Good to see everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye, Red Tail Dog. Thank you. Oh, and say goodbye to Renee. Yes. Bye! Bye <laughs>